Of the three modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation, convection involves a fluid. Now, it doesn't matter what the density of that fluid is or what the viscosity of it is. And by the way, air is a fluid. That counts as convective heat transfer. So if you have a fluid transferring heat to something or transferring heat from something, you can bet that convection has a pretty big role in the overall heat transfer. So let's go ahead and take a look at a problem that involves convective heat transfer. In this problem, we have a large home ice cream maker that's being used to freeze ice cream. We just took that bowl out of the fridge, so it's pretty chilly. We fill the bowl up to a certain depth with ice cream mix, and we're letting it freeze. We know the convective heat transfer coefficient, and we also know the amount of heat transferred. So what we want to do is find the temperature of the ice cream mix. First, I want to point out that this is not an unsteady state heat transfer problem. There's nothing in this problem about time. We are taking the temperature of the ice cream mix at this particular moment in time. As we move through the freezing and the ice cream mix temperature drops, the heat transfer is going to change, and so is the convective heat transfer coefficient. So we're just looking at this moment in time. Second, we know it's a convective heat transfer problem because we have ice cream mix. Ice cream mix is a fluid. It is milk, cream, sugar, flavoring, anything else you want to put in there to make your ice cream really tasty, but it is a fluid. So this is convective heat transfer. We'll start this problem by drawing our diagram. Right, there we go. We have our ice cream bowl. It's filled to a certain height with ice cream and it is a given diameter. This little guy right here is a stirrer. And I am well aware that a stirrer in a home ice cream maker does not look at all like this little paddle I have drawn. But if I was to draw the full scrape surfaced heat exchanger setup that's in your homemade ice cream maker, well, first off, I'm not an artist, so it would look terrible. And second, it would obscure pretty much everything else in the drawing. So I have this little paddle in here to show you that the ice cream is being mixed in some way, even though it's not true to life. Still okay for the purposes of this drawing. Now that we have our drawing set up, let's write down our equation for convective heat transfer. This is the general equation for convective heat transfer. In this equation, Q is our rate of heat transfer, H is our convective heat transfer coefficient. A is the area involved in the heat transfer, so that's everything that the liquid is touching. TS is our surface temperature, so that's the temperature of our bowl walls. And T infinity is the bulk temperature of our ice cream mix, the bulk temperature of our fluid. What we're asked for is the temperature of our ice cream mix, so that's T infinity. Let's rearrange this equation so that we are solving for T infinity. There's our equation for T infinity. Now, we have almost everything we need to solve this problem. We're given TS, that's the bowl temperature. We're given our Q, the rate of heat transfer, and we're given H, our convective heat transfer coefficient. We don't have A, but we have the information to get it. That's the area used for heat transfer. So let's break down what's being used for heat transfer. Let's think about that bowl. It has a bottom that's touching the ice cream mix and it has sides that's touching the ice cream mix. So I am operating under the assumption that we have a constant diameter in our ice cream maker bowl, which if you've ever seen the ones put out by commercial ice cream makers, that's probably not a great assumption, but it's the one I'm making for this problem. Makes the math a lot easier. So the bottom of that cylindrical bowl is going to be a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius, or pi d squared over 4, where d is the diameter. I'm given the diameter, so I'm going to use pi d squared over 4. Okay, that takes care of the bottom, but we have sides on this. So let's think about the cylinder. The surface area of the sides of the cylinder, if you unroll that into a flat rectangle, you have one side of the rectangle being the height here, 
And then you have the other side of the rectangle, the width of the rectangle. Well, that's the diameter, but it's also more than that because the diameter is just the, the measurement across the circle. And if we unroll the circle, it's going to be longer than the diameter. And in fact, it's the diameter times pi. So it's actually the circumference of that circle. So the area of the unrolled cylinder is pi times d times h. And that is the formula for our surface area. So let's plug in all our numbers and figure out what the surface area in this problem is. All right, our area is 0.613 meters squared. That's what we can plug into our equation for t infinity. Before we start plugging in our numbers for t infinity, I want to make a point about q. Let's look at the original equation. If we are freezing this ice cream, we know that t infinity, the bulk temperature of our ice cream, is going to be greater than ts, the bowl used to freeze the ice cream mix. And we know that because we are trying to freeze this ice cream mix. So that means that if we are making our ice cream mix colder, the surface temperature of our walls has got to be colder than the bulk. Otherwise, the heat transfer would be going the other way. And so H is always positive and A is always positive because that's how those two numbers are defined. So if we have a greater T infinity than TS, Q is going to come out negative. So when we plug in the Q that we're given here, 4,300 watts, we need to plug in negative 4,300 watts to make these numbers work out properly and to get the correct T infinity. So when we plug in for Q, that's going to be minus 4,300 watts. Otherwise, our numbers are going to not work out. T infinity needs to be greater than TS. So let's plug everything in and see what we get. There we go. T infinity is 16.9 degrees Celsius. So that means if our average room temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius, we just got started with this ice cream freezing process. And that makes sense because we're getting a decent amount of heat transfer here, 4,300 watts, which is joules per second. So that's a fairly high heat transfer rate for a home ice cream maker. As T infinity gets closer to TS, Q is going to start dropping if nothing else happens to our system, if the area stays the same and if the convective heat transfer coefficient stays the same. That's just because our temperatures are getting closer together, so there's not as much heat transfer going on. It gets harder and harder to transfer heat the closer your temperatures are because there's not so much of a gradient between one temperature and the other temperature. So there's convective heat transfer. Notice that I did not differentiate forced versus free convection in here. That's okay. You can make the argument of, well, we'll have forced versus free based on how fast that agitator is turning. But either way, you can still use this same equation right here, the Q hat equation. That works for all convective heat transfer problems. If you've got a convective heat transfer problem, this equation is a safe bet to use.